Hey guys, what's up? Matt here. Welcome to the episode of Coffee is for Closers. Today we've got uh, David Duncan, who is the sales manager of an online uh, sort of fitness company, but I'll let him kind of go into that. And a little while ago, he came to us to try and get some help, you know, learning how to be a better sales manager, learning how to be someone that can take the data, look at it, analyze it, and then tactically and strategically make changes in order to push the business forward. And that is what we're going to be going over today. So if you guys want to hear more about the nitty gritty, the tactical, actual changes that people can make to their sales processes with their teams and that kind of good stuff to make sure you stay all the way through to the end. All right, Dave, what's going on, buddy? All right, how's it going, Matt? Just sales to... director, though, not sales manager. Sorry. Well, <laughs> is, there, like, is there a difference? Yeah, yeah. yeah? One's, one's uh, managing like the day-to-day -day bullshit and the one's a bit more strategic. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's probably different company to company, I guess, depending on how the, uh, depending on how the, the management structure works. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit about uh, your company, what it is you do, so people can get some background. Yeah, so I uh, work for a company called Svetness. We do in-home personal training. So it's okay. kind of a unique service where the trainer comes actually to your house, condo, gym, or outside, meets you in a park, <laughs> or wherever, and they'll work out of you one-on-one. -on -one. So it okay. kind of formed during COVID when kind of gym shut down. Oh, yeah. And um, people couldn't get out in public so the company kind of blew up and okay. basically uh, you know I kind of joined about nine months ago um, actually from a tech company Okay, didn't have, didn't have any fitness sales experience so I kind of reached out to you needed help I was like Matt help me go into this new company <laughs> and then about fitness sales it looks hard yeah fitness sales are it's an interesting one I think it's a really good place for people to start. You can get tons of volume, um, you know, lots of uh, emotional selling and lots of, you know, objections and money because it's a non ROI based product. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can get, you just get a vast swath of people from like the super rich to the super broke to really motivated, yeah. not motivated. Like you get such a crazy variety of individuals that I think it really accelerates your selling. Yeah, um, I think it, anyway. it's definitely different from like a, a B2B like tech product while I was no. selling. And I, I'd been following you and Jeremy for a couple of years in my previous job. And it was, it's not that I couldn't apply a lot of the emotional stuff. I just didn't see how it connected compared no. to when you're now truly selling an emotional product. You can't fall okay. back on the software demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're selling a, a result and an intangible outcome so it forces yep. you to be be better exactly okay so what sort of made you come so you you sort of uh had a bit of a sea change came over to this new company new role sales director right the big d <laughs> sales right exactly. um and uh you were like because you came to us like i guess actually before you'd started i think is that right yeah i think it was through a facebook ad i think i think you got one of your i think it was either yours or i think it was one of your stories on facebook it was it, you were showing about how your appointment setters were doing like 400 calls a day from a dialer and i was like oh wow that's a that's a lot that's a lot of <laughs> then the tech you had set up was was pretty like um it looked pretty advanced compared yeah. to like what i was using so i was like my guys are in, my guys are only doing like 100 calls uh manually so i was yeah. like what are you guys doing so that, that's kind of what prompted me to reach out learn your secrets okay okay and then we sort of took you through a bit of a like let's have a look at the data let's have a look at the structure of the people and how everything's being run and i guess mm -hmm. like what did we what do we do like what were the changes that some of the changes that made that were really kind of i guess uh tangibly effective yeah yeah so i think if you think of it like a top of, let's start top of the funnel i yep. looked at like three three areas like increasing schedule percentage increasing show percentage and then increasing the, the win rate yeah so i started off with like schedule percentage just looking at first of all how many calls the guys were doing tight you tell you told me to go away and time how long it took them to you know time uh, do the call update the crm add notes things like that and it was taking them like eight minutes compared to like one and a half minutes so you were like you know they, they should be doing 300 calls a day not 100 so that that, that was first of all was just like volume yeah so first of all was like volume and then then also amount of outreach so 12 times in seven days compared to you know maybe a few times and then giving up yep. so that was that was like the first thing that like straight away allowed me to weed out some people in the team that weren't you know they weren't committed to that because i kind of joined a team they've just been getting away of doing 80 calls getting over 10 hours getting paid whatever just screwing around really so yeah really well, when you start looking at time right you, people can't hide so it's like, well, if it exactly. takes you this long to do this and you do this many of that, that's four hours yeah. a day. What do you do for the rest of your job? You know, so it's like, hmm. exactly. Yeah. So that, that that's always a good place to start, you know, 
Um, and uh, that enabled, so with a schedule percentage, we, when I first joined, we were at like 22%. So schedule is like number of leads we scheduled into a book call. Yeah. Uh, it was about 22%. Okay. And now it's about 35%. Okay. So that's like, that's not the schedule percentage. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's over like, what kind of, what kind of volume of, I guess, bookings this is on over like two closures? 5,700 leads roughly. Okay. So 7% is, you know, 10% would be 570. So we're looking at an additional 400 calls a month, something like that? Mm, probably a few more than that. Probably like 700 calls additional booked. Okay. And then, yeah, booked. Yeah. And then the second thing was, uh, so then we moved down the funnel into like show up rate. Yeah. When fitness, you said, you know, and you said this, like fitness sales is going to be one of the lowest sharp rates you're going to get. People are very emotional and flippant. Yeah. And um we had we didn't have a we didn't have a, a calendar system in. So yeah, we looked at. Was this sort of like people were manually booking into diaries and all kinds of yeah, stuff? Yeah, they, they had they had their own CRM diary, but it there wouldn't be first of all, you know, there wouldn't be any reminder sent out. Yeah, there would be an email reminder, but not a phone call reminder, text reminder. Yeah. Um, but also you couldn't control the priority of those meetings. So like now we have it where our best reps we can give them more yeah, of those book yeah. calls. Yeah, it was more like. Actually, before it was worse because you had some of the reps that would been with the company for a while that had close relationships with the SDRs, the kind of appointment centers. So they'd get more even though they weren't that good. Yeah, okay. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> So it can it can be even worse if you don't if you don't do anything about that. So we 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 sorted the scheduling system out. That, so we we're like thirty three percent show rate before that. Now we're at like fifty, which is yep. a bit better. We got a landing page set up to warm up warm up the people before the call as well. Yeah, like our FAQ page. Yep. With, yeah. With uh, like, um, kind of like it, it, you know, it's got like a VSL, a lot of like case studies, proof, yeah. testimonials. I think it's it's important because like these are all you know these are all like like little things like seven percent here, five percent there, eight percent there, ten percent there. It's such a compounding effect on a business, and that's why starting top of funnel is so important. Because like if you a lot of businesses they come in and they're just like, like they come to us and like okay we want to train our sales team to be to be better because they're losing people on this objection. And like, I spoke to one guy a while ago and they're doing big, not like they're doing like over a hundred million a year. And I was like, I could definitely do that. But I guarantee you, if you just gave me like a week in your mm -hmm. data and CRM, I could probably find you 2% at the top. Yeah, <laughs> and like, and that would, to, that would equate to far more money. Yeah. Diminishing returns at some point. And also the process is always easier to fix than try and get people to the do people. stuff. Exactly. There's a really important thing. Like if you can fix the process, Process, then the, the 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 issue really comes when you have like when everything is a variable and nothing is a constant. That's when like everything kind of gets stuck down because you've mm -hmm. got like if you haven't got people on like a script, then you don't know what's being said across everybody. So you can't bank that the right things are being done. If you don't have an auditing process for that, if you don't have like decent enough data, if you don't have um like everyone knows the client journey and what everyone has to do from step A to step B to step C or whatever. And then, so like, there's no constant. So like the analogy that I give people is like, when you're a sniper, like the gun, when you're learning how to shoot, the gun is the constant. So like, then all you have to do is focus on shooting it straight. Like, so basically stop yourself from making mistakes. Cause that gun in a vice is never going to miss, right? Like if you take out all external factors and just shoot a gun. It's going fucking dead straight. Right? <laughs> like, so and if that scope is set up correctly, again, it's going to be exactly where it should be because it's engineered to do that, right? So the things that make people miss are variables. Now, the number one variable is the person shooting. So if you can make the person shooting a constant, then you can start to focus on the other variables, which is like wind, elevation, distance, etc., which is the things that you really need to dial in. But like people, you, there's no point learning how to adjust for windage and elevation and distance, right? If you suck, like, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right, right. And so, yeah, like, people are important as well. But yeah, yeah. So, but you can all that all that stuff is a process. Like, just like the way you lie behind a gun. Like, everything is process like that. And then it's actually far more of a skill set to read what's happening with the wind, to read what's happening with everything. Like, that's the real skill. Is dialing in the scope is the skill, right? Mm -hmm. Just sitting down and shooting straight. Like anyone can be taught that. It's not super difficult. It's like the other parts, right? 
So like, it's the same in sales. Like what you want to do is you want to make as many consistencies as possible, which would be like processing everything. It's like, if you know what's going to happen at every step of the way, then from there you start to remove variables because you can put your hand on heart and say, well, I know that's good. I know that's good. I know that's good. Well, let's work on the things that like could be really variable. And you know what I mean? Is it the mm -hmm. people? Is it this? So if you just got to dial in process first, you're going to get like yeah. a 10x result over like focusing on like objection handling. And I agree. And even one thing I did even taking your stuff step further was run data on show rate by day. So we found yeah. out that Mondays have a 65% show rate compared to a Wednesday at 43. We ran like three months a day. And now I'm getting it by hour of the day. So then I can craft the uh, the sales rep schedules around on that. So we actually have a sales team that runs seven days a week, um, pretty much 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, yeah. shifts so we we're able to just reach out to leads multiple times per day um even if you don't catch them the morning catch them the evening yeah weekends everyone else is sleeping so that that was key as well um and then also even taking it a step further from like calendly which only sends the automatic phone notifications if the customer replies it doesn't actually go back to the rep because yeah yeah calendly toll free number so We've actually set it up. So we set up like, a, I use like a consultant to do this, but he set it up between our just call dialer, make API. So it actually sends automatic text confirmations from the individual's phone number within the dialer and reminders and everything. So it's all personalized from each rep's individual number and the replies yeah. go back to the rep. So have there's you, like- Have you seen a deliverability issue since the, um, since the need to register all numbers? Oh, the C name stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we use like reputation ID monitoring software. Yeah, you can see yeah, sort of way, yeah. the platforms. Yeah. I mean, this is like next level stuff, but you kind of gave me a lot of the. Uh, yeah. Like we've been registering our phone numbers for years. So, like the fact yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Have You've do already it. been doing a lot of that stuff. But you, not a lot of companies do this. Like, no, they don't. You, you're kind of way ahead of that. You know, even I had a lot of experience before. But sometimes, especially when, you, when you're like a bigger company, like I was in a bigger tech company that was doing yeah, like yeah. 50 million it, 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 you're just really running the team you're not really kind of like you know it's difficult with advanced tech stuff that's kind of left to what they call rev ops or like sales yeah. ops yeah yeah it's, you're so close to the ground in this space that you can kind of be a lot more kind of creative than i was in this so yeah absolutely that, that was huge that was definitely huge yeah um and what are you saying then, like oh yeah okay, sorry can i yeah okay keep going no no then so that then the win rate so again, like you said, the scripting is so important because when I joined, there was no scripts. So let you had 10 different salespeople saying 10 different things, not yeah. using just Which means it's impossible from a management standpoint to actually go like, well, I mean, I guess this this works or this doesn't work. Like there's no consistency. We're using Gong, we're trialing Gong right now. Yeah, we use that. Um, yeah. What did, what were your thoughts on that? Do you like uh, it? expensive, but yeah, I mean, if you got the money like you have, then pretty good. If you if you haven't got <laughs> as much. We use we're trialing Zoom IQ. So it's the yeah. Zoom IQ Very version similar. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, to see, we were going like, to try both, but I heard really good things about Gong from like a, from uh, like I spoke to Pace Morby. Uh, yeah. And uh, they, they've been using Gong for a while, doing all their like sales rep analysis and stuff like that. So they can tell. I know a lot about it. I piloted it in my last company. Yeah. Um, I would, I mean, obviously it's an awesome tool. The thing, the thing I'm using it with, it's got the same thing as Zoom IQ. The way I'm setting it up is around the indicators, right? So in terms of, I want to know when an objection's mentioned, show me how this person handled this objection. So I set okay. all the objections up and then it will show me how they're actually handling it. So I can skip through and do training just like that. So it's going to be awesome for your, your managers to do that. Yeah. Um, I'd love yeah, to set it up for our clients, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> What other stuff are you kind of trialing like that at the moment? Um, so like we got Gong, like we've sort of redone our data. We just hired a full-time data scientist like like full time in house uh to like collate like but that not just sales the entire business to code the whole business right so then from there like all the information is like actually edified in code and stored in servers and stuff like that so that we can then like you could then attach an ai to it and just ask it questions about the business right you know like what yeah. are the shop rates in january this you know like what are the uh, like gross profit that we average during these months and these times it cross references all the data and tells you. But then from there, we can look at potentially custom coding our own CRM. Um, 
which for like what we're doing is probably the next step uh, would be completely custom coding everything, making our own scheduling system, our own, you know, everything. That's what Pace did. They, they, they customed everything because like you get to a point where you just kind of go beyond a lot of the capabilities, a lot of the softwares, or like you have so many software that like it just becomes a real clunky, complex mess. So like just go on and make your own. You we know? have, yeah, we have that. And our, with the best feature you need this is basically we link it with Zoom. So it gives you accurate show up rates. So if it records two people attending the Zoom, it marks it off as a as a show. There's no way that it can be cheated. You have that all. currently or you had that on your previous? So we have that right now. Yeah, right. So that's what I mean, because we don't use, we, we don't use, we don't use this. We use our custom CRM. Yeah, yeah. There are massive like drawbacks to a custom because like yeah. everything's a fuck fight. Like you never yeah. do anything. But if you got the coders in house and all that kind of stuff, it shouldn't be too bad. We're messing around with a little bit of AI as well. I've been working with a company for about four months now, uh, building a few things. Uh, what for do you that. want to do with that? Like uh, mainly like confirmation, shop, conversations, like stuff for our challenges, right? Because like, you know, we'll have 16,000 registrations, 20,000 registrations. So like we can't call them, we can't text them. You know what I mean? Like it's just physically like there's too many people. So like, but we can import them into our CRM. And then the AI can com- converse with them in the CRM. Uh, the Ed or AI, I saw that. I try to get. Uh, we're not using that. We're, we've been we've been working with someone pretty closely. It's all been custom coded. That's um, cool. That's the game yeah. changer. That. Yeah. So like, we'll see if it works. It's like in beta at the moment. Talking to like a hundred people a day. Um. But you know, we get thousands and thousands and thousands of leads. So like, it's sort of a very small segment of what it is we're doing but if it, if it, if it pulls off then it'll be, it'll be it'll be pretty interesting um but yeah we're just sort of trying to figure out a way to like we have really good data now like our marketing and our sales departments talk really really well with each other like we we have this sort of constants and we know we put this here this comes out put this here this comes out like we have a constant sort of shortage like ironically a shortage of sales reps um but that's because like it's just like to find people who we think represent the brand well enough to sell is really difficult What's you your know? selection process of interest um i like that people just apply and from there do they, have do they have to be from the sales persuasion facebook group though do you take a lot of them from there or where do they now, have to a lot of them are clients like a lot of them are like inner circle members or 3.0 members yeah okay. a lot i would say um and then some are like referrals some are like we've had clients that have just like badgered us into becoming <laughs> yeah hiring and selection like yeah so we make we we listen to phone calls so we'll make them send us recordings do a role play and then from there they'll do an interview usually two um and then they get we we said we have different types of sales reps so we have like uh we have an inbound and outbound reps so like so what we've got outbound rep which is like someone who just calls outbound leads and closes them they get a different commission because they're not taking any book calls so but they almost exclusively get buyer leads right so like if they're they're only really talking to customers they're not talking to leads right it's people who have bought something but we get like 100 buyer leads a day so we have a few guys doing that uh then from there we have like our inbound guys who get inbound book calls um and then we have like an sdr team and then we have a dm setting team and then we're trialing like a new sort of type of almost like a unicorn closer thing which is like someone who's like a very very high skill set and we're basically like creating an entire ecosystem around them they get their own dm setter get their own outbounder like yeah they have like show me some tier stuff you have set up it's pretty oh it's a little bit beyond that one um it's like their commissions get way higher but they have way higher kpis like Mm -hmm. so it's just like it's a more difficult thing to do but like if they get it right they could make an awful lot um but like it's all based around like having a certain percentage of upsell having a certain percentage of referral like you know what i mean and then having like uh contractually guaranteeing a close rate stuff like that so and like cash Where are you, so right. with with us with a team your size i guess like when you say like recruitment's a challenge is it because you're trying to grow and add more people on and replace people that just aren't good enough or like what is kind of no like we have a performance management piece but like we don't get we don't like turn over that many i would say like our sales staff turnover is far lower than the the average sales staff turnover is thirty five percent annually. We're, we're we're not there. Yeah. Uh, so have you, do they work remotely, or do you have everyone in like the? Well, we we, we we want to bring everybody into. We want to bring as many people as possible into the office. Do the Musk. Yeah. Yeah. It's just <laughs> uh, it's just way better. 
You know what I mean? Not everybody will come, obviously. Like, it's just sort of impossible, but as many people as possible. And we're going to be recruiting, you know, more specifically around the area to to try and get people in the office because it just builds a way better culture, builds a better brand. Definitely. You have more, you know, like it's the people make more money and stuff like that, right? So it's easier to train them as well because you can train them in person. So I feel like there's a real tangible benefit to that. Um, so that's what we're going to be sort of trying to do over the next little bit um, and aim to have like, you know, a good chunk of our company in an office by, you know, the middle of 2024 if that's admin staff everybody like having just a good chunk of people probably not more than you know if we could get 50 percent in office i'd be stoked you know i mean and, it's, it's yeah it's like recruiting it's isn't a challenge well. yeah like it's not hard to find people <laughs> like we have thousands of them do you know what i mean yeah. but it's just they do video book. interviews like they submit a video on like automatic video and why they want the job like you know, yeah like, so we have this whole form they submit using ClickUp and then from there, like we can like review and then contact the people who we want. We also do like uh like group intakes. So we'll do like a, okay, we're looking for 10 people. And then from there I have like a hundred people apply and then just try and sift through them, you know? Um, well, and one of the things we talked about when we were working together is, you know, when it, when you know it's time to scale, right? Looking at spot utilization rate around 80% yeah. lead flow. But when do you make a decision on, you know, um, where you are now with so many different departments? Like how, how, how do you know when to grow to that next? Because you're hiring people at once, not just one rep, right? So it's not like, oh, we just yeah. have one like, I think like for, it depends on the state of the business, right? So like uh, sometimes like consolidation is a better move than growth, I think, um, you know, which for me feels like the move at the moment is like not to try and ramp it too hard. You know, we onboard so many clients that like, you know, we got to fix or make that, I think, way tighter. It's pretty good, you know, but like it's not good enough for like what I want to see, whether it will ever be good enough for what I want to see is a different story. But I think like, uh, you know, growth for growth sake, I think is a mistake. And I think, you know, you got to grow within the confines of the business that you have, not the business that you wish you had, you know? Uh, and so customer, like our customers being happy and renewing and resigning is way more important to me than like hiring more sales reps or making the business quote unquote bigger. I like, I would rather kind of just make the business better. Um, I agree. I yeah. mean, that's where we're, right now you know especially with fitness it's one of those well and with an expensive package like personal training you know people are spending hundreds maybe thousand plus a month right for their three six nine twelve month contract and then you know, it's, it's not once they've hit their goal let's say they lose 20 pounds for their wedding or they just wanted to kind of like knock yeah. off like 80 pounds it's then how to get them to re-sign rather than just always focusing on new people at, at the front end right yeah so they stuff is there that kind of upsell and account management aspect um i think one thing we need to work on which i'm going to help with is getting the right leader in there to like reverse engineer what is what successful steps does a successful customer take yeah their milestones like you know did they did they rate their first session out of five how quickly did they get their first session like seventh session 10 session right really tracking yeah. those milestones but do you track anything in terms of understanding and reverse engineering or nearing i guess what your best customers are doing and then kind of apply that or how do you kind of yeah that? yeah like we've started doing a lot of our upsells through email that's like a lot of our renewals and stuff like that are just on we probably renew two a day on email the, cool. the team is definitely on that what we're working at the moment is redoing is completely redoing the first like 90 days of the client journey um for each one and having it far more touch point you know to like really build the habits with the people early that's what we're working on at the moment that's supposed to be done by the end of september and then completely rolled out like active as of what august september october one that's supposed to be done so it's, it's a really big project it requires hiring more people and like you know really staffing up that side of it and having like a difference between sort of customer service and coaching and sort of really nailing everything down but that's really the thing that we have to i think re-engineer because like uh you know from an educational standpoint like you sort of really got to uh, uh without without sounding like pejorative sort of dumb it down to the lowest common denominator like you really have to um if 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 fifty percent of people can look at it and make sense, like it's not good enough. Like it has to be eighty percent of people, ninety percent of people can look at it and have it make sense, you know. And then just figure out like what percentage of people you just you're willing to not be able to serve, you know. Um, I think Gong, Gong, the way Gong can help with that as well, you can set up keywords like refund, complain, not happy. That can alert you in Slack. To you as the manager, or not you, obviously, but. You're above that, but <laughs> the, the actual manager saying, boom, unhappy customer mentioned uh, for five minutes into this call, this word refund or termination was mentioned. Yeah. Uh, 
so that that's going to be really good for you at scale like i said right with smaller teams like us i don't think it's it's, it's useful but like yeah. with the amount of reps you have like there's so much going on and the quality just dis- dissipates right yeah so it's really really it. difficult to keep on top of everything you know there's so many calls. one thing i would like it to do is mark the calls automatically to an embed scorecard. It has a scorecard in build, but the next level of tech is like you plug your script in and then it will listen to all the calls and mark them everything to the script and then spit out and be like, Joe only averages 50% on his calls of covering the objections the right way, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's that, that that's fantastic. That's sort of what the stuff that we spoke about. I was at Brunson's mastermind and Pace came up and did a really, really good talk and his business partner, who's like the marketing guy, it was pretty phenomenal. Cody. Um, uh, I don't remember. Business partner. Yeah, his business partner. Yeah. Cody, yeah. Yeah. Really, really smart guy. <laughs> like <laughs> clearly knows what the hell he's doing. Uh <laughs> it's funny because we had like identical stats on everything. Really? Yeah, like everything was identical. It was just like, you know, VSL, we had everything set up the exact same way and we'd never even seen his stuff. Like every everything was sort of set up the same way. We were using the same tech stack, but they had transitioned to all like all custom. But they just before that they were using the same tech stack, same stats. Our close rates were higher, right? But you know, it's because like yeah. they, they fucking should be right <laughs> right but they're like, yeah, client, everyone else in the world. They're like client stick rate was crazy because like um like uh it's a lifetime program uh, but their program's totally different like we can't they, do some things that they can do but up to yeah now i've been following pace for a while like he's he's like a real estate hormose isn't he so he's he switched on for sure. He works yeah. hard as well. Yeah, very smart, very good. Does a lot of really cool things for clients. I thought that was really, really interesting. But also like his clientele is like one of the ways that he finds deals. So like it's mm-hmm. a really interesting sort of business model that you can really heavily monetize on kind of all angles. Um as long as you hold the people in your ecosystem for long enough. So it was really interesting to see kind of his thoughts on customer service and all that kind of good stuff and how he builds a tribe and, you know, like what communities really are and stuff like that. But like, he'll have a meetup with like four or 500 people in like a random spot, you know? Yeah. 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 He's yeah. my first of those. He's, he does amazing and everything like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, how, how does he manage his team he does nothing to do with it no 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 no, sorry i mean he's sales culture right you know do you know much about that compared to your like is it similar you said the tech similar the results but yeah i mean like we've trained a ton of their sales guys so like a ton of their guys came through inner circle Mm -hmm. stuff like that um but you know pace has got a good name uh i don't think doing his sales would be particularly hard you know he's got a phenomenal reputation he does everything right he's pretty clean you know a couple of recent things that you know i mean but other than that (laughs) everything he's got a great reputation so i feel like he he, was that i know he got he got like in it he was in he got scammed by someone or like yeah yeah he was involved in something him and like pete vargas and a bunch of dudes were in this like crypto investment thing and they got scammed and anyway it was a whole thing i watched the coffee the other episode it was fascinating (laughs) um but yeah man so all right so what are the changes that you're looking to make over the next little bit kind of like what are you looking to do to progress the team where do you want to take it yeah so uh to kind of recap six i mean it was interesting i joined in january which was like the best month for fitness um but i i just started so we we did about 200 customers now we're doing around 300 should be doing 325 so same amount of leads um fantastic what we're trying to do is kind of like avoid what you just said is avoid growth at all costs, refine the churn, refine the onboarding experience, um, and then start scaling. We can we can actually get about 10x the leads that we're getting right now from at about $20 a lead. So the mark the marketing isn't really an issue. It's it's like the customer success element, which is what we're really working on right now. So the group yeah. it's kind of like fixing that and then scaling. So, you know, doubling up to around four. Our target, I think next by next March is around 450 customers. Yeah. Well the thing is like you've got to you gotta you gotta like do it in spurts, right? So it's like, okay, we've got the sales up to where we need it to be to where now we can invest in the customer success again. Because like you get yeah awesome customer success and then from there like you grow yeah you know i mean because you're getting good customer results but then like as you grow it's difficult to focus on all areas so if even if your customer fulfillment stays the same but it gets diluted somewhat it's not as good you know mm-hmm. what i mean then it's like you got to consolidate and then like put the the effort, the energy, the time, and the thought back into the customer to then get it to a place where like you're comfortable to grow again. Otherwise, you just end up with a business that like just constantly grows, and then your customer, your customer department gets so heavily diluted that you just end up like getting such a bad name that you can't recover from it. Like, which we've seen tons of businesses do. Dad luck. <laughs> yeah, and it's just you know it's happened to tons of people. Um, because like think- growing, growing businesses, like when as soon as you hit a heater, 
with sales and marketing, like you can really ramp that, you know, like if you figure out sales and marketing, then you can grow anything, you know, but it's like, just cause you can, doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely, hard definitely a comment because like I said, and I was saying this at the start, you know, the, the negatives are compounded and more people talk about the negatives and positives. So yeah, you, know, you start, problems in the team more complaints it feels like it's getting worse it's not you're just growing it's growing pains yeah i mean if you had if if you sign up uh 400 people a month right and you have a one percent complaint rate then you have four complaints a month right it's a bit, but like that can seem like a lot like four likes like four negative google reviews do you know what i mean or something like that whereas like in reality it's 99 percent of people are not complaining but people don't remember that we've set up we've actually set up slack channels uh for positive reviews which is with the whole team and then also cs team wins when they save a deal they'll when they save a customer from termination they'll post the screenshots and they share that as a deal in the deal chat like yeah, deal. Right. so we do we do reward kind of like saved deals and positive reviews but one thing i'm rolling out right now is this bit of software called referral rock which is a complete it's taken about five six months to engineer in our custom crm but it's a third party bit of tech basically it's like one of the best referral engine platforms out there yeah. We're going to turn our customers, our trainers, our employees, pretty much anyone can have their own account and dashboard where they can send their own link out and they can track their earnings um, in the dashboard. Yeah, beautiful. I think, I think referrals is huge in fitness. Yeah, I think it's huge in every, in a, like in every business. If you can get referrals right, you can, I mean, like, you know, you like if, if you spend 25% of a customer on ads, which for an online business is not unreasonable, right? You can give them 20% and you'd still save money. Yeah, and that's growing every year, you know, ad costs are growing so yeah. you can basically yeah. give the cpa to them a cost per acquisition to them sorry but yeah i think that's for me right now fixing fixing the churn and then ref, the referral program stuff really taking that to the, we've got 700 trainers so 700 trainers like 2000 customers are paying with new ones added each month obviously you know that, that's a, that's a lot of you know referrals you could offer and even in like alex's new book he talks about getting giving away a discount and has in exchange for three referrals the hardest thing about referrals is really tracking it and making it seem worth people's while which is yeah. why i think you have to have that kind of platform element so people can keep track of their rewards and their own yeah, link. I built out a full referral program a little while ago, but like the problem is I didn't have a, I didn't know there was a platform to sort of go out there. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a look at it. Referral rock. Yeah. That's um, who uses that. Like, cause I looked at what, like, you know, the big, the bigger uh, stock pl uh, trading platforms like Acorn or PayPal. Yeah, yeah. Like They're own custom ones though. So you can't really find it. So this is the one I found before and it does, it's going to, it's going to do the job. Yeah. I like it. Uh, it's good. Have a look into that. But yeah, that's that's kind of where my focus is right now is like definitely on the customer success stuff and referrals. Yeah. We can scale leads up. So sales and marketing isn't an issue. I think what, what is going to be more of an issue is like the growing pains that scaling brings. Like I've yeah. been with teams grown from work 10 to 100 and, you know. Lots of change. You know, there's tons of stuff that you got to deal with when it comes to that shit. Yeah. So I think your thing about being in the office makes it definitely works better for like those big environments. Mm. Like when you have like 50 plus people yeah. having in there, it's very difficult remotely. Absolutely. But yeah, man, that's pretty. So, I mean, I'm really grateful for your, for your help. So we've kind of got off to a good start this year. And so it's just working through stuff. Stuff takes time. You got to wait for devs to do stuff. You've got to just wait for those little changes to kind of take effect that you're rolling through. Like even things like coaching, like the stuff with Zoom, like coaching someone's win, it takes a couple of months to really get up there, you know? Us, like you just, you won't know what's working and what's not. So you got to be slow and deliberate. And that's the annoying part. And that's the reason why people don't do it. You know, like you got to be deliberate, got to be slow, one change at a time bang 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 watch it go watch it go like i mean i remember when we implemented like the the tech show up sequence it's like oh look people are showing mm -hmm. up like, sweet that's a win yeah next next so, thing. Sweet. that's a win. So many, yeah the next thing yeah yeah um next. so one the, the other thing as well as i'd advise is this is something i used to do in my last role is we have quotas but we also we sh we have a peer we have, you have this you have a profit and loss like a PL for the team but we actually break it down at the rep level so we look at how many schedules they took their lead and sdr cost and their seat cost individualized yeah so then we set the minimum cash collected quotas based on their actual seat costs as well yeah which means 
if someone's grabbing more leads, more schedules, right? They'll yeah, they're gonna bring in more money, so they're gonna look better. Yeah, but we, 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 ROI. Like, okay. So similar thing. So basically, it's like how much ad spend did we spend on you versus? Oh, you. Well, right, that's cool. Yeah. So then, and then from there, the scoring of like rep of the month is like a minimum cash collection threshold with a with a with the highest ROI because that like that's the most efficient rep because like you might you might work less and like that's fine but if you're really efficient it's like that's fantastic if I if I put fifty grand into you and you return seven hundred I, I I would rather that than the guy that I put four hundred into and returns me a million you know it's exactly. like wait perfect let's do, do it in that the only other people I've met that actually really looks at that at rep level yeah we yeah we do it for the rep and the SDRs. DM setters, everyone. And then you look at their churn as well, of how, and then take that off as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's all like uh, uh, for the month and then for like a lifetime. Um, the finance department does it. Some rep put loads through that's just not mis selling, but high expectations, and then they don't get fulfilled, especially in our business as well. So, problem. It's a problem in every business. You always get rogue reps doing that shit. Fair enough. It's just about catching them. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Um, right, David, that was awesome. I know it's late where you are, so I'll let you go to bed, but uh, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing the insights of what it's like kind of being in a growth team and some of the shit that you're doing in the background to maximize everything. You're doing the good, th- you're doing the good stuff. Fighting the good fight. Cheers, Thank mate. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs>